Praise the Lord. This is Bishop Moore again with the Full Gospel Evangelistic Ministries Ministry about Jesus, the ministry about Yeshua. We're happy to come to you again by the means, amen, of this YouTube channel, and we hope, amen, and pray that these messages and lessons uh, are beneficial to you, amen. We are talking about Jesus, who is the hope of the world, and I believe that you can agree with me that if there ever was a time we need hope, that time is now. Amen. We need the Lord. If we ever, songwriter said, if we ever need the Lord before, we sure do need Him now. We want to uh, finish up, or uh, we want to finish up, yes, the uh, topic we were talking about, Christ deals with church politics. Amen. Christ deals with church politics. Amen. He deals with church politics. Now, church politics is that which have to deal with the activities associated with the governance of the church. Amen. Let me say that again. Church politics are those things that have to deal or associated with the activities of governing the church. Amen. Uh, the governance of the church or the church affairs. Amen. If Christ dealt with it. Amen. We shouldn't have any problems in the church, if anywhere. Amen. Because Jesus said, by love shall all men know that you are my disciples and love is the main ingredient in serving the Lord. Love is. The Bible said God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Then Jesus himself said of himself greater love had no man than this than that a man lay down his life for his friends and he laid down his life for us and called us friends and then he turned around and told us to love our, our brother as we love ourselves. So love uh, should be the main ingredient in every church. And when there's love, there's no reason for a strike. There's no reason for a fighting of power. Amen. And we talked about, amen, uh, uh, church politics having to deal with uh, the people trying to power grabbing, people trying to get power. Let's go back to our, to our scripture that we talked about, amen, or talk from our root scripture. In the book of Luke, the 22nd chapter and the 24th verse, Luke 22 and verse 24. There was also a strife among them, talking about the disciples, which of them should be accounted the greatest. And he said unto them, talking about Jesus, the kings of the Gentiles exercise lordship over them, and they that exercise authority upon them are called benefactors. But ye shall not be so, but he that is greatest among you, let him be as the younger, and he that is chief as he that doth serve. This is what the Lord told his disciples. This is what the Lord told his disciples. Luke recorded that. Then we go to the book of Matthew, where Matthew also recorded the same incident, the same uh, uh, incident uh, and the same lesson and gives us a little more insight into it in the book of Matthew, the 20th chapter, and the, Matthew, the 20th chapter, and the 25th verse. Jesus called them unto him and said, Ye know that the princes of the Gentiles exercise dominion over them, and they that are great exercise authority upon them, but it shall not be so among you, but whosoever will be great among you, let him be your minister, you'll recall, I mean, we were talking, amen, I believe in our last video uh, of, about church politics where Christ, uh, uh, there's no reason for power grabbing in the church. Hey, let's, re let's finish reading this. But it shall not be so among you, but whosoever will be great among you, Jesus said, let him be your minister, and whosoever will be chief among you, let him be your servant. This is what the Lord said, whosoever will be chief among you, let him be your servant, even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister, and to give his life a ransom for many. So we are to follow the example that Jesus gave and that Jesus left for the church. He oversaw uh, the twelve disciples and his disciples, but he did not restrain them. In other words, the church is not to become cult-like. The church is not to become like a cult where people just follow whatever is said without reasoning, without any uh, 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 explanation, without any kind of uh, 
uh, understanding. We just gonna whatever you say, do that's just what we gonna do. Uh, yeah, G, the Mary did tell uh, the the servants when Jesus was in Cana about uh, whatsoever he said unto you do. But that was Jesus, and we are not Christ. There is one head of the church, and that is Christ. I mean, the church politics is that which have to do, as I said, with with the. Uh, 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 activities of the church and those things that deal with the church as far as church affairs are concerned and it's also dealing with church administration. We'll get a little bit deeper into that t today. Uh, church administration, how you govern. See, everything is uh, everything in the church. Jesus said, upon this rock I build my church. And he said, the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So everything that the church needs and everything that the church needed, the Lord made sure to have those things. What he didn't deal with, he had it to be passed on in Scripture. And so we are to follow the word of God. We quote so many times, quote, maybe every, every video where Jesus told his disciples in Matthew 28, and 20, he said, teaching them to observe. He first told them to go into all the world and, and, and to preach the gospel and to teach all men to observe all things whatsoever he had commanded. And his word follows everything. Matthew 4 and 4, as we uh, quote many times or have quoted before, uh, the Lord said, man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceed out of the mouth of God. So even in church, in our church administration of how we govern, it is to be followed or we are to follow the, the commandments of Christ. There is not to be any seeking of, of control over one another because then this counsel that counsels out where the Bible said the just shall live by faith and then as he said in Romans 14 and 5, he said that every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. So if we are not to follow our mind, if we're not to have an understanding, and Solomon said, in all thy getting, get an understanding. Anytime a minister uh, tells you to just follow what I say do, and just do what I say do, then he's operating outside the will of God and outside the commandments of Christ. Because the Lord said, in all thy getting, in all thy getting, he said, get an understanding. So we need to make sure that everything we do is followed by and, and confirmed by and built on the Word of God. Amen. Everything will, is to be done by the Word of God. Yes, the minister do have authority. I will not say and will not uh, tell that lie or, or pass that false teaching off that the minister don't have authority. He has been given authority by Christ. He has been given authority by Christ, but Christ has only given him authorization to fulfill and enact his will. He's not, he's not a free for all. The church is not a free for all. You do whatever you want to do. That's not the minister, and that's not the members either. We don't all do what we want to do. We are under. Jesus said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Uh, uh, we are to follow Christ, and if we follow Christ, then he is going to give ministers the authority. The Bible says the Lord has said in the church, first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers, then it turned around and he feeds and said, and, and, and he gave some apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, for the edifying of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the building up of the body of Christ, for the perfecting of the saints. So yes, the minister do have authority, but that authority, his authority is to come under the Lord's authority. Paul told the church in, in the book of Corinth, the 11th chapter, he said, Far be ye therefore followers of me, even as I am also of Christ. So there is a chain of command. God is first. Christ follows his father perfectly. He said, I and my father are one. And then we as ministers of Christ, we are to follow Christ. We are ministers of Christ. I cannot say that enough because we have lost that, that, that concept that we are ministers of Christ. I'm not a minister of holiness. I'm not a minister of baptism. I'm not a minister of whatever church you want to call. I am a minister of Christ. 
Now I may preach holiness or I may talk about baptism, but I am a minister of Christ. You'll never see that in the scripture. A minister of holiness, a minister of baptism, a minister of Methodist, a minister of Catholic. You'll never read that in the word of God because that's, that, that, that's man further breaking down the structure that Christ has. It. That, that falls off into that, into that carnality that Paul talked about when he said, one say I'm of Cephas, one say I'm of, I'm of Paul, one say I'm of Apollo, then we say today, one say I'm Baptist, one say I'm Holiness, one say I'm Church of God in Christ, one say I'm Catholic. Then Paul asked the question, is Christ divided? He's not divided, so we are ministers of Christ. If God called you into the ministry, he called you to represent him. He called you to represent Christ. He is the head of the church, and in all things, the Bible said, he might have the preeminence. And the authority that he gives the minister, the apostle, the bishop, the pastor, is to come under his word, his authority. Peter, Apostle Peter talks in the book of 1 Peter, the fifth chapter. The elders which are among you, I exhort who also am an elder and a witness of the suffering of Christ and a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed, feed the flock of God which is among you. Taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly. Taking the oversight thereof. That over, the word oversight, that means the, the supervision thereof. Taking the oversight thereof. Then Paul, Apostle Paul talks to uh, the church, I believe, in, of Ephesus. In Acts, the 21st chapter, and the... Acts 21, I believe in verse around 20, maybe around 28. He says, Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost had made you overseers to feed the church of God which he had purchased with his own blood. So the minister is called to oversee. He is called to oversight. Not to dominate, but to oversee. He himself, Jesus said, I am the door, I am the shepherd. The, to him the porter open it. To him the porter opens. We are, as ministers of the Lord, whatever the Lord says about it, that's what we want to do. Whatever the Lord's word says, then that's what it is. And everything that we want to do or decide to do or want to do, it has to come under and be in agreement with and not in conflict with whatever Jesus has said. Not to dominate. Are you listening to me? Now, there are diversities. There are diversities of gift. This you find this in 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter and the 4th verse. He said, now, there are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. We're not to have that boisterous Lord spirit, or the spirit of a Lord. Do this what I said. Do this what I said. No. You're not, you're not, you're not driving cattle. You're leading sheep. Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. He said, and there are differences of administration. We're talking about church politics now. There are differences of administrations, he said, but the same law. There's only one law. The pastor, the bishop, the apostle, the whoever. There's not no other. There's only one Lord. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. That Lord is Jesus Christ. We all are to come under him and submit to him and to whatever he says do. This is what we should do if we're following in and walking in the commandments of the Lord. Now, there are diversities of administration. There are differences of administration. He said, but the same Lord. There are differences of administration of how we minister. I hope you don't think I'm being critical of any minister. I'm not. I'm showing you what Jesus said do. Now, in what Jesus said do, there are many different administrations. Just like there's more than one way to cook a chicken. If you want to use that, you can fry him, you can bake him, you can barbecue him. Huh? If they're in it, smoking, boiling, 
Which one cooked the chicken? All of them cooked the chicken. They just cooked them in a different way. I use that to say there are many different ways of, of, of administering the gospel and carrying forth the gospel of Jesus Christ. One may teach, one may preach. Huh? But it all, he said, but the same law, we all are going to come under the same law. There's no reason for fighting in the church among the house of God. If the world can get along, then we certainly should be able to get along in the house of the Lord. Uh, different administrations. There, there's a ministry for the poor. There's a ministry to the saints. The ministry to the saints. First Corinthians, the uh, 16th chapter, Paul talks about the myth, the, the offering, the ministry, the, the offering for the saints, for the ministry of the saints, to help the saints in their need. We talked about is the church a ministry or is it a business? Then there is a way to rebuke. There's a, there's a time to rebuke. There's a time to correct those who have went astray. All of this is found in the Word of God as an example of those that have went astray. In Galatians, he says, uh, if a brother be overtaken in a fault, he said, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness. He's telling you how to restore that brother. You're not going to, you're not to try to restore him by uh, 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 belittling him. You're not to restore him by, by, by beating up on him. That's not going to bring about restoration. He said, restore him in the spirit of meekness. He said, considering yourself, lest thou also be tempted. So everything that we need is found in the word of God, Christ. In the book of 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, about that 28th verse, Christ put governments in the church. He put it in the church. The church is to be self-governing. It's to be, let me say that again, the church is to be self-governing because what we want to do, our main job, our main goal, our main focus is pleasing Christ. And Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So whatever the Lord says do, that's what we're going to do. And if the church is to be the pillow and ground of the truth, so we that are serving the Lord, we all I want to know is what the Lord says. It don't matter who it is. It could be my mother. If the word of God says something and it applies to her, then it is what the word said it is. We used to sing a song back uh, when I was younger and uh, in the church that I grew up in. Uh, uh, the, I know the Bible is right. Somebody's wrong. Whatever the Lord says about it, it's all right. See, we're to follow Christ. What has happened in these last days that people have taken their eyes off Christ and started looking at others. And any time you do that, you're going to err. As I said, we are to lead sheep. We're not driving cattle. Oversee the flock. We, David said, we are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Uh, you shouldn't waste your time trying to lead goats. I, 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 know, I know personally about trying to lead goats. You're trying to lead goats. I ain't talking about the goat out in the yard either. I'm talking about that person that has a goat spirit. They're always bucking something. They're always, the Bible says, a spirit of variance. They're always, you say go left, they want to go right. Pastor say stand, they want to sit. Time to sing, they pray. Time to preach, they sleeping. It, it, that's that, so many times, that's a goat. And I'm not talking about the greatest of all time either. The spirit of a goat. That's just going to be opposite. You waste your time. I, 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 can, I, can, I, I can testify that you waste your time trying to convert a goat. You waste your time trying to convert a goat. He got to be born again. He got to be saved. A miracle got to take place. And that heart's got to be changed. We shouldn't be trying to force, and we shouldn't have to try to force a child of God to do anything. Should have to try to force a child of God to do anything. Paul, Peter said, he said, not by constraint. All a child of God wants to do is please the Lord. I remember when the Lord first saved me. 
me and my two sisters, we got started in the church. Whatever the Lord said, whatever was preached, and if it was the word of God and you showed it to me in the word of God, there was no argument about it. There was no debate about it. Something we got wrong. But if the, the, the spirit, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. A, a meek and quiet spirit the Lord loves. So, so whatever the Lord says about it, and that's what we want to do. Let's go to the book of First, uh, First John, First John, the third chapter. First John, the third chapter, and the seventh verse. First John, the third chapter, and the seventh verse. Listen to how he talks to the people of God, the sheep. David said he leading me by the still waters, huh? Uh, let's listen to how, how Apostle John, and these are apostles I'm talking about, Peter, James, John, uh, 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 Apostle Paul. First, what is this, what I say? First John 3 and verse 7. He says, little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. Let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. This is the nature of a child of God, the nature of a sheep. Then that eight verse says, he that committed sin is of the devil. So the nature of a child of God is to come into the house of God. Whatever Jesus said, take my yoke upon you, for my yoke is easy and my yoke and my burden is light. We come out of the world, we take off the yoke of sin. We come out of the world, we take off the yoke of Satan. But we don't just, it's not just a free for all. We're not just free to just run footloose and fancy free. Jesus said, take my yoke now upon you and learn of me. So all we want to do is do the will of God. And in that kind of spirit, then the church can run smoothly. He said, forbearing one another, forgiving one another, tenderhearted, kindly affection one toward another. There's no cause for church politics. It's just like in your body. My hand don't fight this other hand. Both of them are hand. Neither one of them fight. I'm 60 years old, and this hand has never fought this hand. This, this foot has never fought, fought this other foot. This hand is not jealous of what this foot get. My feet are always, when I, when I go out, covered up. My hands are, are rarely, if ever, covered up. They're exposed to the, to the elements. They're not mad. They're not jealous. There's no strife. The Bible said that there be no schism in the body. We may, we may have to get into that later on. So we want to be in the house of God, and we want to be meek and humble. Are you listening to me? All right, now let's go back to that verse because he said, he said, uh, little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness, that's 1 John 3 and verse 7. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous even as he is righteous. So we want to make sure that we're doing that which is right let no man deceive you. That's the point I want to get to. Let no man deceive you. There's never to be deceit in the house of God. There's never to be misleading. There's never to be manipulation in the house of God. And church politics should never be involved in deception. Uh, we, uh, we're never called. God don't use deception. That's of the devil. Jesus said in the book of John, the 8th chapter, he said, you are of your father, talking to some of those in his time. He said, the devil, he was a liar from the beginning. And the father of it. So God never uses lies. As a minister of Jesus Christ and as a church of Christ, we're never to be involved in deception. Are you listening to me? Never to be involved in deception. I love my brother. I should be able to believe what he says. And when we start as brother and lying to one another, then the Bible says all liars are going to have their part in the lake. So we should be able to believe what each other say. 
If I can't believe what you say, then I don't believe you're saved. Because you're a liar. And the Bible said, the Lord said, don't bear false witness. And there's no big lie, little lie, white lie, black lie, peace, peace sake lie, or whatever. A lie is a lie. And any time we line ourselves up with deception, then we're not lining ourselves up with God. Anytime you feel the need that you got to pull the wool over somebody's eye, you got to bamboozle somebody, you got to hoodwink somebody, you got to trick somebody into something, that is not of God. Jesus said men love darkness or secrecy because their deeds are evil. No man that's doing good hates the light, but comes to it that his deeds may be made manifest and seen that they are wrought in God. There's never to be and never a time for deception. As we talked in another uh, video, uh, when Jesus said, don't let your left hand know what your right hand was doing, he was talking about giving of alms. Go read it in Matthew the sixth chapter. He was not talking about dealing with each other. He said, let, all, let, let us be with, on, Speak the same thing. Got to be one in judgment, one in mind. You can't be one in mind, one in judgment if you don't have the same information and if you don't have truthful information. We are to follow that which is true. Let's go to the book of 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter and the first verse. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry as we have received mercy, he said, we faint not, but have renounced, disowned the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness. Do you hear that? Let me read it again. But have renounced. Let me tell. We're, we're gonna, let, let's, let's just walk through this. But have renounced, disowned the hidden things of dishonesty. We don't hide. Solomon said, he that covered his sins shall not prosper, but he that confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. We don't have hidden sins. We don't have skeletons in our closet because when we came to the Lord and started serving the Lord, we confessed all of that and we were forgiven of that. And now we are to walk in the light. Jesus talked about the Pharisees being as white as sepulchers that were full of dead men's bones. We don't have bones in our closets. Because our closets are for us to go in and to pray in. Enter in your closet and your father would see it in secret, will reward thee open. How are you going to pray in the closet and, you, and it's full of bones? No, you got to get rid of them clothes. You got to get rid of them bones but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty. We're not to do dishonest things. We're not to speak with a forked tongue. We're not to speak double tongue. Jesus said, let your yea be yea, and your nay be nay. For whatsoever cometh more than this, he said, cometh of evil. We're not to use ambiguity, which means to double talk. Our words mean more than one thing. That's the, that, that's, that's lying. Because Jesus said, let your yea be yea and your nay be nay. Whatsoever cometh more than that cometh of evil. So in the ministration of the church, in the church's operation, there is not to be hidden things of dishonesty. He said, not walking in craftiness. Not walking in craftiness. That craftiness means cunning deceit. Craftiness means trickery. Craftiness means ambiguity. We're not to walk in craftiness. Jesus told his disciples, he said, what I preach, what I, what you hear in the ear, I want you to preach it on the housetops. It's nothing to be hid. We're to walk in transparency. Listen to what he said. But have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully. But by manifestation of the truth, by showing forth the truth, 
That which is false, that which is fake, is hypocritical. But by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. I should be able to believe my brother. Because when I start, when, my, when, when I can't trust what my brother say, then that's deception. And when I can't trust what my brother said, then we can't work together. How can two walk together except they be agreed? And if I have to pick and choose between what's right and what's wrong, what Christ has said, and what's wrong, and I choose what's wrong, then I'm preaching, I'm teaching, I'm picking against, I'm, I'm choosing against Christ. Let me say that again. Anytime I have to choose between what is right and what is of Christ, and what is wrong, and what is against the word of God, or contrary to the word of God, and I choose that which is negative, I choose that which is against the word of God, I choose that which is against Christ, then I have chosen against Christ. All I want to do is what's right. It don't matter who, who it is, we are not to have respect a person. Are you listening to me? The devil deals in deceit. Jesus said, ye shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. You want to know what I'm going to do? Let me know what the truth is. I'm not going to do, do, do nothing until I know what the truth is. Let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. So I'm going to wait and see what, what is the truth. Because once the truth comes, light comes, truth is light. Once light comes, it is easy to know what to do. Because I'm going to follow the light. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. So we want to walk in the will of God. Church politics is not to be. We're not a struggle for, pro for power. And we're not to do anything that's contrary to the will of God. Ephesians, let's look at this. Ephesians, the fifth chapter. And the 11th and the 10th verse, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. Proving what is acceptable. That's what I just got to say. I want to make sure that what I do is right in the eyes of God, not right in the eyes of men. That means it can be the apostle on down to the brother. It don't matter who it is. I got to make sure that I'm pleasing in the eyes of God. I got to make sure that what I do is pleasing in the eyes of God. It might cause me to lose favor with man, but I would rather lose favor with man and keep favor with God. Proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. Listen to verse 11. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. That's what Jesus said. That's what the Lord said to do. Don't have fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. But rather reprove them. If I got to mistreat my brother, you telling me to do something that's against the will of God? No, I can't do that. I love you, but I'm not going to go that way because that violates the law of my Lord. For it is a shame, verse 12, even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. Now, how can this apply to any child of God? We are to walk as children of the light. We are to walk in the light of God's word. But all things that are reproved, he said, are manifest by the light. See, when you preach the word, when you teach the word, when you come into the tr knowledge of the truth, that it's easy to discern what's right and what's wrong. There's no ambiguity if something is right or wrong. Not in the light of God's word. That may be a hard to, to prove in the light of man's conscience or in the light of man's influence or man's desire, but the word clearly shows us what is right and what is wrong. The Lord said in the beginning, let there be light to separate the light from the darkness. He didn't keep them together. There is a separate thing. How can we have fellowship with unrighteousness? For whatsoever doesn't make manifest, it said, is light. Whatever doesn't make manifest 
is light. We want to walk in the light of God's word. We want to walk in the light of God's word. As I said, we can't work together if there's no truth there. Truth has to be the centerpiece of church administration. Let me say that again. Truth has to be the centerpiece of church administration. If there's no truth and I can't trust my brother, if there are lies, if there's ambiguity, if there's deceit, if there's manipulation, then we're divided. We're divided. And a divided church cannot stand. Jesus said, let's get that. In the book of Matthew, the 12th chapter, and the 25th verse, Jesus, and Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said unto them, Every kingdom, every kingdom, divided against itself is brought to desolation. And every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. And every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. If we can't trust each other, if we're not focused on the truth, and if I'm following Christ and you following somebody else, then we got a problem. If I'm following Christ and I read to you and show you what the word of God say do, and you're following somebody else that says do something opposite of that, then we're not going to be in agreement. We're divided. One of us is not walking with the Lord. But if we walk in the light together, as he is in the light, then John said we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all unrighteousness. There is no conflict when we're both walking in the light. There's only conflict when somebody wants to walk in darkness. Are you listening to me? Every house, every kingdom divided against itself, is brought to desolation. So there's no cause for fighting, infighting in the house of God. We're living in a day and time where there are so many churches breaking up. So many churches conflict and the church bust up. Sometimes it's necessary. I'm not gonna say it's wrong. But just like I just got through saying, somebody is not walking in the light. Somebody is not following Christ. Somebody is not following the word of God. Let's read this. Let's read this. 1 Corinthians 6 and verse 1. Apostle Paul says, Dare any of you, having a matter against another, go to law before the unjust and not before the saints? Do ye not know that the saints shall judge the world? And if the world shall be judged by you, are ye unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Know ye not that we shall judge angels? How much more are things that pertain unto this life? If then ye have judgment of things pertaining to this life, Paul says sarcastically, I believe, set them to judge who are least esteemed in the church. I speak to, I speak to your shame. Is it so that there is not a wise man among you? No, not one that shall, be that shall be able to judge between his brethren. But brother go to law with brother and that before the unjust. Listen to what he said. Now therefore there is utterly a fault among you. Because ye go to law one with another. Why do ye not rather take the wrong? Why do ye not rather suffer yourself to be defrauded? or cheated, or swindled, or hoodwinked, or conned, or craftiness, or manipulated. Nay, ye do wrong, and defraud, and that your brother. Now listen to how he, how he includes all of this, keeping everything in his context. Nay, ye do wrong, and defraud, and that your brother. See, remember, Jesus said, what he told Paul, why persecutest thou me? And then he said in the book, of Matthew, the 25th chapter, inasmuch as you've done it under the least of these, my brethren, you've done it under me. So when you mistreat your brother, when you manipulate your brother, when you deceive your brother, when you use craftiness on your brother, then you're doing it to Christ. Nay, ye do wrong and defraud, and that your brother. Now listen to what he said. Know ye not that the unrighteous, see, defrauding, which means to cheat, to use trickery of, 
pull the wool over their eyes. He said, nay, ye do wrong and defraud your brother. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God when we start defrauding one another? You're not saved. Sin is sin. If you're defrauding your brother or committing fornication, both of them is sin. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor infeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. That's not to be in the house of God. Let's finish reading. And such, verse 11, and such were some of you. This is what we did before we got saved. This is what we did before we came into the church, before we said that we were following Christ. And such were some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified. But ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. So no, we don't have no reason to have church politics. Because nobody's trying to be greater. We serve in the Lord. I'm not trying to out-preach you. I'm preaching for the Lord. There are different administrations. But I'm not trying to out-preach. I'm not in competition with nobody because there's a word for that. When we start competing, you know what the scripture calls that? In Galatians 5 and verse 19, go read it. He calls that emulation. When you start trying to compete, emulation means to compete. We're never to compete in the house of God. We don't have to compete for God's love and we're never to compete with one another. You do what you can do, and let me do what I can do. Even in giving, you give a free will offering. Whatever you're able to give. I'm not to try to manipulate you or extort you to make you give. The Lord loveth the cheerful giver. See, everything we need is in the house of God, is in the word of God. He said, don't give of necessity. Don't give grudgingly, but willingly. So everything we need is in the word of God. And when we follow and walk with Jesus, there's peace. I'm going to close with what Jesus said in Matthew, the 11th chapter. He said, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden." He said, I will give you rest. He said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. He said, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy. And my burden is light. God bless you till we see you in our next video.